We're absolutely delighted to be the Hong Kong most attractive employer for, mm. a, for a second time. Yep. I mean, it's particularly meaningful for us as it's our 50th anniversary this year. Wow. So we will be celebrating for more reasons than, than one. It's been a real encouragement to win and it was a reminder that we can't stand still. So we've been continuing to improve and do a number of different initiatives. We've got a whole new talent acquisition um, portal okay. so that when people are applying it's much, much easier and also they get a feel for what are we as a company. Mm. We've also looked at how we do training in the company. Um, we, we call it anytime, anywhere okay. because people are expecting different things now and, and they want their own pace training but also want to be able to go externally and, and do additional training. Canada's expectations have really changed over the course of COVID. Um, what would you say are some of the new or heightened expectations you've observed and how would you address them? One of the things we've been really looking at is what can we offer in, in, in terms of work-life balance. So we've been really working on those kind of initiatives, whether it's sabbatical, mm -hmm. remote working, staggered working hours, flexible lunch hours. But when it comes down to it, it's about how can we be outcome driven? So for the first time in 10 years of history in conducting this employer brand research in Hong Kong, work-life balance actually overtook salary and benefits as the top most important EVP factor for Hong Kongers. So how do you view this shift and what would you say are some of the work-life initiatives that Swire has done? Obviously people still want to be paid well. Of course. But it I becomes more of a yeah. <laughs> becomes more of a hygiene factor. Some of the things that we've really been looking at is what does flexibility mean to different levels of our staff? And, and how can we match their expectations while also making sure we're meeting our customer demands. Across the world, many companies are expecting that their employees to return to the office full-time after COVID measures have been lifted. Uh, why do you think this is and how do you think it will impact the workers' work-life balance and attitude towards the company? Some employers want people to come back because they also do see that there is value in that face-to-face -face interaction. Mm. That said, there are lots of benefits of working remotely, so it's how can you get the best of both in terms of the great resignation happening after COVID, how do you reduce the push factors to retain your employees? I think we've all taken a step back during COVID and said, is this what I want to do? I only have one life. Mm. Who do I want to work, work for during this time? Right. And our aim is to make sure we're listening to our people and we're doing a lot through our engagement surveys, understanding what they value and then trying to ensure that we meet those expectations. But talking specifically to Gen Z, I think um, progression, very clear training, opportunities to really excel and stretch themselves right. are particularly important. So we've been looking at our internship programs. One really interesting new initiative which we're just introducing now is something that we're calling Nextcom, a sort of youth advisory um, group, what? which will be for, from our younger generation staff and will help us answer questions that we have as an organisation. I mean, we're finding the sort of the skills gap in, in sort of a few key areas, which is particularly around digital, okay. data analytics um, and product management. Yeah. We're having to be quite creative, okay. where you think about how can we um, upskill people within the organisation. Do they have to be in Hong Kong? Mm -hmm. Can some of them be in Hong Kong? Can some of them be elsewhere? How attractive are we to work for mm. as a company and that's an important aspect of attracting the right skills and the right people to our organization. Mm. As more and more job seekers use online channels for example such as Google or LinkedIn to look for jobs, uh, could you share with us some of the digital talent engagement strategies uh, and tactics that you're implementing? So you have this amazing, these amazing platforms where you can search and be maybe a little bit more creative about mm. who you're looking for. I mean when you talk about some of our digital engagement strategies we have this fantastic um, sort of, uh, recognition um, tool called Recognize, okay. um, which you can anybody can recognize anybody else very easily. How do you think employer branding efforts would change in the next 10 years? Uh, I'd like to think that for us in, in Swap Properties, we'll still have the same values, mm. that those don't change. But what we're saying consistently to ourselves is that we need to evolve. We need to continue to learn from what our employees, what our staff, and what the market expect us to be. Mm. So I see this as a sort of learning opportunity um, to see, okay, how do we need to improve? Mm. I think that will be a more central part of our brand as we move forward. Mm.